Alrighty y'all, welcome back. And in this video, we're gonna learn about Docker images, containers, and the Docker server. Now, that's all gonna be great, but before we do that, uh, I just wanna show you something interesting. I just wanna know if anyone else has experienced this or if I'm the only one, it's only on my computer, but it drives me nuts. Where whenever you copy and paste something from Google Drive, these single quotes and double quotes are different from the ones that you uh, type into your IDE. So it, it's like slanted like five degrees and it's so hard to notice. But anyways, okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and get to the video. Enough of me chatting. <sighs> okay, Docker images and containers. A lot of people, whenever they're researching Docker, they get a little bit confused on what exactly the difference is between each. Because at first glance, it seems like they have a pretty similar purpose and in fact, they're quite different. So, in another thing I wanna mention real quick, I don't typically like going over like vocabulary terms until we get to the point in time where we actually have to learn that term because I think, I don't know, just like in your brain, you have nothing to uh, connect it to or to relate it to, so it's hard to remember or hard to learn. However, it is so sprinkled in everything we're going to be talking about in these upcoming videos. I thought it was important to kind of go over some of these things early on. So in this video, it is mainly going to be about the concepts and in the next couple, start getting those hands dirty. All right. So that said, what is an image? An image is a read only template that contains a set of instructions for creating a container. So again, plain English, it's pretty much the set of instructions on how to create a container. A container is a runnable instance of an image. So it's its own isolated environment, like we saw in the last video, that runs inside of your operating system. And each of these containers, almost like its own computer, it has its own memory, it has its own networking, it has resources separate from your main operating system. All right, so we can see the fact that a container is basically like a little server running on your computer and an image is the instructions on how to create these little servers. Simple enough. Now hop back over into your terminal and run Docker version. And I wanna point out two things, and that is Docker version, it lists client and server. So each of these have a version, but hmm, this is interesting. So I thought, you know, I just downloaded Docker, got one thing and you know, I was expecting one version number, but what are these two things running right here? Well, believe it or not, whenever you downloaded Docker, there were, think of it like two things that came with it. The first thing is the Docker server or the Docker daemon. This is the background process that runs that can create images, run containers. It's basically what you think of as Docker running on your computer. Now, the other thing that it came with was the Docker CLI. This is the command line tool that we use to type into so we can interact with the Docker server. Now, check this out. Go ahead and run Docker run hello world back in your terminal. And what this is gonna do is this run command is gonna create and run this hello world image in a new container. Now, this hello world image right here, this is just a sample image that they create for beginners to test out their Docker installs basically. And all it has is, a, like I said, a simple tiny program on it that prints text out to the screen whenever you run it. So you'll see, again, uh, nothing meaningful, just a quick sample image. Now, the cool thing that I wanna show you is look what happens whenever I run this command. I'm gonna hit enter now. All right, unable to find image pulling. Okay, so let's see what that did. Okay, so Docker on hello world and it said unable to find image, hello world latest locally, unable to find image locally, pulling from library hello. Okay, what is this all about? Whenever you ran the command docker run hello world, right into your CLI, your CLI sent that command to your Docker server, the background process running on your computer that can do all the Docker things. And it asked that, hey, Docker server, do you have this image, hello world? And Docker server went, mm, nah, I ain't got that image. I know nothing about it. And then it goes, you know what, CLI? Let me go ahead and check Docker hub and I'll let you know if I can get it from there. 
So it went up to Docker Hub. It saw that there was indeed a Hello World image that someone created. It downloaded it and it created a new container using the instructions in that image. And after it was done creating it, it sent that output, that log, to the CLI, and that is what the CLI displayed on our screen for us. So <laughs> pretty much uh, the Docker server doing the heavy lifting, talking to both Docker Hub, making everything nice and formatted for our display. How nice of it. All right, so let's look at one more thing before I let you guys go. Now I am gonna go ahead and run this again and look at what happens this time. Oh. That was uh, pretty quick and hmm. unlike before where it said unable to find and getting it, yada, yada, it didn't say that at all. And in fact, if you notice that entire command, it ran quite a bit faster. So what is going on in this case? Well, let me just slide over here. All right. So the Docker server is smart enough to know that whenever you ask for an image that you just asked for like <laughs> like 10 seconds ago it's like nah i don't need to go to docker hub this time because what i did when you weren't looking is i actually cached that image because i had a feeling that you might ask for it again and if you do then i'm not gonna have to download it so once you download images using the run command Docker server does cache those and I'll show you guys how to clean your cache later, probably in like two tutorials or so, but just know that that is kind of what's happening behind the scenes. So with all of that said, I am hoping that you now have a little better understanding of images, containers, uh, the importance of the architecture and understanding this and what happens whenever you run these simple commands like run hello world a lot more behind the scenes than meets the eye. All right, so I'm going to go uh, see what's going on on Discord, but thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video. Also, special shout out, Sanjeev. Rocking the flames, baby. Keep it going.